it died. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, or if you are new here, welcome to my channel. This is actually the first video that I'm filming after the great subscriber spike of 2019. On this channel, we talk about all the houseplant things, we appreciate the plants that we have, and we grow deeper in our knowledge of them. In this video, I thought that it would be a fun idea to revisit a video that I made last year that is called Welcome to my plant funeral. So I am dressed for the occasion. I'm wearing black for my plant funeral because I have to admit, I do have a lot of deaths to announce. <laughs> it is definitely not fun to kill plants, but it is good to reflect on why they died and what you can do in the future to prevent that. And I have definitely been doing a lot of reflection as I look back at these plants. And to be honest with you, a lot of these plants died because I just lost interest in them. And I think that that's completely okay. I think that a lot of the time we feel guilty for losing interest in certain plants, like we should have this huge emotional attachment to it. And that's just not always the case. And a plant is not going to be sentimental forever. I just wanted to share with you guys the plants that I have killed in 2019 and just do a formal address to say our final goodbye to them. <laughs> so in order to kind of figure out which plants haven't made it, I have looked through my Instagram feed to see which plants I have posted about that don't exist anymore. All right, this first plant is a Monstera adansonii, not the first Monstera adansonii in this video. <laughs> so this is my first ever, and I ordered it from Hertz Garden last year on Amazon, actually. I had no idea that you could order plants on Amazon, and when I saw that, I was like, I'm down to try it. And that was my first ever ordering plants in the mail experience. And I will say that it wasn't terrible. Like the plant arrived, it was big, but it was a narrow form of Adansonia. I don't think that I particularly enjoyed the narrow form, so it was a little bit harder for me to want to keep it alive just because I didn't really like the way that it looked. With this plant specifically, I did keep it for a very long time actually, and it ended up living out on my patio for a while, and that is kind of just where I let things go, to be honest with you. I stopped liking the way that it looked, and for some reason, I look back at pictures now and I'm like, wow, that plant was beautiful. But for some reason in the moment, I just hated the way that it looked and I just could not care less if it died or if it survived. So I kind of just watered it when I remembered and left it and eventually it did die and I'm not really sorry about it. <laughs> Sometimes you just don't like a plant and that's okay. And I do love Monstera adansonii, but not the narrow form. That's what I've come to realize. And should I have given it to a friend? Yes. <laughs> that's really like a big lesson for me is I should just give plants away when they stop sparking joy for me rather than letting them die a slow and painful death on my patio. The next plant here, you can already see in this picture that it does not look great. So this actually, <laughs> This is my classroom. I was a teacher last year. I am no longer a teacher, just in case I get any questions about it. This plant was actually given to me by a friend. She was moving and couldn't take it with her, so I took it along and it lived in my classroom and it was so happy. Like, I can't even explain why the plants in my classroom were happy. They were all north facing windows and I guess the classroom lights were on sometimes. I usually would teach with natural light though. I liked that a lot more just for me and the kids both. I mean, I had so many windows in my room but they were north facing so they weren't super strong over here in the northern hemisphere. So I just don't know how they were surviving but they were really happy and this plant actually was a victim. Actually all of the plants on this shelf were a victim of the great bookshelf fall of 2019. That was what my students called it. And I was moving this bookshelf actually to take this very photo and I was moving it back and all of a sudden the bookshelf just split in half and fell. And so all of the books on the shelf, all of the plants, everything just went and I was shocked. It was so loud and my classroom was right above the principal's office. <laughs> So I can just imagine what she heard down there. All of the students in the classroom next to me actually ran in to see if I was okay because it was so loud that it really was like concerning. After I cleaned up the shelf, some of the plants survived, some of them didn't. And unfortunately, this gorgeous Aglionema did not make it. And I'm so sad about it because it was such a solid plant. And when I move into a bigger space and like I have rooms that I can fill up with plants or I just need a plant for that room, 
I'm definitely going to be getting this type of aglionema if I can find it because they're such good plants. They're so solid. They need next to nothing from you. So definitely if you like easy plants, this is one of them. The next plant, <laughs> I knew that there would be plants in this video that would get me a little bit sad and emotional because this is actually my very first Fetonia I ever owned and I have never owned a Fetonia this beautiful since. And it, I know that it looks really weird in this photo because as it was growing, it kept like spreading out and it was getting a little bit leggy and this was at the point, I think in this post I was asking if I should trim it back or not and what I ended up doing was I trimmed it back and then I put the pieces back into the pot and didn't water propagate them. I was trying to soil propagate them and it just did not go well and so I lost a lot of the plant in the process of that and then I went on vacation and it didn't get watered because I think it was behind another plant so my roommate didn't see it. It died a really sad and tragic death and I'm. this is really one of the plants that I'm so bummed about. I wish so badly that I still had it um, it was so beautiful and seriously like the Fetonia that I have now is not as great as this one I still think about this plant all the time rest in peace little buddy. I'm so sad. I miss you so much All right, this next plant was another online order. This was one of my first online orders as well It was like in the same time period that I ordered the first Adansonii and this string of hearts It's a variegated string of hearts and it was from an Etsy store I don't remember who I ordered it from and it was literally the tiniest plant ever and I think I paid like $30 for this and then it died which was so sad and I don't even really know why it died but when I pulled it out of the pot I noticed it wasn't doing well there was like not a root system at all and so I put it in water and it was surviving in water and actually started to put out new growth and then I went on vacation and it died I think that's a theme in this video like I went on vacation and then it died if I was leaving on a long enough trip I would leave my plants with a plant sitter, I guess, but I think that anytime you leave town, you should expect that something is gonna go wrong, and unfortunately, this just, it did not go right. <laughs> All right, so the next plant that I want to address in this plant funeral video is this gorgeous philodendron hope, and this was actually one of my first house plants. I was so proud of it. It grew so much, it got so big. But there was just a point in its life where things just started going downhill and I really am not sure why. It didn't have a pest, it didn't have a watering issue. I thought perhaps it was a light issue in my old house. I didn't have a ton of great light there. But then I brought it to my new place and it just still was not very happy. So I put it on the patio <laughs> and it didn't survive the patio. So it's gone now and I'm really sad about it. But in the end of its life, it was not this full, like as full as this plant is right here. It was really stringy and stretched out and it just looked so bad. It definitely did not look like this when it died. If it had looked like this when it died, I would have been gutted, but it was, it was like a slow and painful death, you know, like it was not good. So definitely rest in peace to my philodendron hope. I miss this plant so much. It was such a great staple. So easy to care for, but all of a sudden something just went wrong and I really don't know what it was. All right, next plant that I want to talk about here is this wax ivy, a variegated wax ivy. Variegated wax ivy was one of the first house plants that I ever had a clipping of and I grew one. It was in my last plant funeral video. So I think that if a plant debuts itself twice, like twice in a row in these plant funeral videos, I should just not have that plant anymore so I'm, I'm taking that hint and I'm not gonna buy any more wax ivies even though they're so beautiful and I think that oh, they're so fun and gorgeous but for some reason they do really really well for a while and then all of a sudden things just go and I don't know why maybe I just wasn't paying close enough attention to it but suddenly things just started going really wrong and I actually just threw it away before it actually died because I needed the pot and the plant was not doing well Comment down below if you do that too. <laughs> All right, this next one. This is the single plant that died when I took it home from California. So if you didn't know, I took a road trip mainly in Southern California, just visiting a bunch of plant shops and hanging out with people and really just kind of having like a last hurrah, like solo trip. Basically what happened with this one is it wasn't for sale when I went to the shop. I went to Mickey's Hargate in LA. Sorry if I said that wrong. But anyway, I saw it and it wasn't for sale. So this is one of the plants that I wanted to find was a wide form Adansonii. And it wasn't for sale at the time because it had recently come in from Europe and they were still acclimating them. 
And so they decided that they would sell it to me because I was asking about it specifically. I took it home and it put out a lot of new leaves. Like it was doing so well. I was confused as to why they were so like, take heed with the plant. But then all of a sudden, <laughs> Things went wrong and I don't know why or what happened but I think the only thing that I can think is maybe the plant got spider mites I don't even know because I remember seeing like webbing on the plant but it wasn't a lot and I was thinking that it was dust more than anything and so once I saw the webbing I took all the precautions necessary and then it lived for a while after that and then all of a sudden it just pfft, something happened so Really, really sad. I went on a vacation, came back, and it was dead. Um, I think it was, I went on my honeymoon, I came back, and it was just gone. So, really sad stuff there. The next plant is my zebra plant. And this plant was so beautiful. It was doing so good. I have no idea what happened. <laughs> okay, so this plant is a really great one because it's very vocal about what it wants and what it needs. When it is thirsty, it will literally deflate. And so that is how I gauged whether it needed water or not, or whatever it needed. I just did that, and it lived outside for most of the year. And then when I moved into my new house, I just realized that a lot of it was not very happy. And then eventually, I think I just threw it away before it fully died because I knew that it was looking very bleak. But I've noticed that whenever I move, I do lose a couple of plants, and this is one of them. And so since I moved this year, I think that's why it feels like there's a lot of plants that died. Maybe it was because it was in a different window situation, or not different window, but just different patio situation, because it went from being outside at my old place to being outside at my new place. And it just did not like it here, and I did not know what to do to fix it. And it wasn't necessarily a plant that really meant a lot to me, so I wasn't going to go out of my way to make sure that it had exactly what it needed. Like, if it was gonna die, it was gonna die, and that's just kind of how I felt about it. I sound like I don't really appreciate my plants in this video, but that is not true at all. Like I said earlier in the video, sometimes you're just over a plant, and you're kind of excited when it dies, you know? So I feel like a lot of these plants, I kind of had that sense of relief when they died, except for the Fetonia. I was very sad about the Fetonia, but mainly relief with everything else. I have to address this. My variegated elephant ear alocasia, the most beautiful plant that I have ever seen easily, easily. And I've seen some beautiful plants. Like I own some beautiful plants, but I have never seen or owned anything as beautiful as this. And I was so gutted when it died. I didn't even want to publicly address it because I was so sad. But basically what happened is I brought it back from Florida and it was doing really great for a while. And then all of a sudden the leaves started to droop and I was like, water, we need water. So I gave it some water and then it perked up. We were on the up and up, you know? And then what happened was all of a sudden I saw all these spots on it. In my home, it is a pretty dry environment, okay? So I don't have any like mega humidity lovers anywhere besides my bathroom. My bathroom I keep at 85% humidity um, with my Lavoit humidifier. But every other spot in my house is not humidity regulated by any means. That was a plant that really needed its humidity to be regulated and I was just trying to see if it would work without it and it, it didn't. <laughs> and I really shouldn't have been so careless with that. But what happened was I started to get these like spots and I knew that it meant some sort of pest. And I was asking online what, I, what people thought it could be and it turns out that it was thrips. And that was my first time ever experiencing thrips. And thrips is one of those really awful pests that just can ravage your house. I mean, I know someone online who had basically their entire collection decimated because of a thrips outbreak. Like, it's serious. So I was just, as much as I loved the plant, like that plant is amazing, as I've mentioned, but it was not worth it to have my entire collection decimated, keeping that in my home. So I took it outside and I tried to treat it and leave it outside, but it just didn't work. And I'm so sad, but one by one, the leaves were just falling off. The thing about it that is most frustrating to me is I should have kept the bulb because alocasias are a bulb plant and you can just replant the bulb or just cut off all of the leaves and it will regrow. I'm so frustrated with myself that I messed this up but I just didn't keep the bulb. Had I done that, I could probably have that plant still, which is very frustrating to me. So if you have an alocasia, that was my first and only alocasia. Like, I don't even know if I wanna go back. <laughs> but 
if you have one and you experience pests like that, like the fried egg or like the zebrina alocasia, beautiful plants and both plants that I would love to own, but they are just so susceptible to pests, especially if it's a little bit dry because that is what the pests love is when the plant is vulnerable and dry. And in my environment that happens more often, I guess, even though I've never had severe pest issues with any of my other plants, but anyway, I digress. Those plants are specifically vulnerable. So if you do have any of those plants that are bulbous, bulb plant, <laughs> you can just cut off the leaves and regrow it. Anyway, that is how that saga ended. If I do go back to Florida, I will 100% bring one back if I can find one because that was the craziest find and it was very simple to bring it back on the plane. Okay, my Hoya linearis, another victim of a pest. And okay, it didn't die because of the pest. It died because of me or something that I was doing wrong or something that was wrong with my environment. And I still haven't exactly pinpointed what it was. Maybe it was a humidity issue, but basically what happened, and I know that a lot of people have experienced this before, is that the linearis started to get woody at the top, like near the pot of the plant and the woody part would just spread. I asked a few people what that meant and they said that you are supposed to cut it off where it starts to get woody and you can reroot the plant. And so I tried my darndest to reroot that plant and it did not work, not even a little bit. And so basically one piece by one piece, the plant died. And then finally, when I was on literally the very last strand, it got mealybugs and I took care of the mealybugs. I thought everything was fine and then it just continued to go downhill. It died, and I'm very sad about it because that was an expensive plant for being so small. And I just don't know if I ever wanna try it with a linearis again because it's very disappointing. And they are so beautiful, but sometimes plants are not even worth the beauty. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's very disappointing. So I'm, I am very sad about that death, but also, I was stressed about it all the time, so it's kind of good that it's gone. All right, so with that, that would be all of the public deaths of my plants this year. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I hope that it kind of brings you a sense of relief if you have killed plants before, to know that I have killed plants before and I will continue to kill plants. You know, every time I move, I expect at least five deaths, so, <laughs> which is very sad. So I hope that that doesn't happen if I move in the future, but definitely if you have killed a plant before, understand that these are all learning experiences and it's a plant you can replace it you know it's it's not the only one in the entire world even as rare as people say it is it's not the only one and if it was it would not be in your house <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching this video again i hope that it encouraged you in your plant journey and i hope that we could mourn our plants together thank you for joining me at my plant funeral it really means the world to me if you like this content and want to see more definitely give my channel a subscribe i noticed that a lot of people who watch my videos are not subscribed which is you know i forget to subscribe sometimes so hopefully this is a nice reminder go ahead and check if you are subscribed hey if you're not subscribe <laughs> all right you guys thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one bye I haven't met my dog this is leo we actually just picked him up from the groomer he was getting a little bit of a haircut we had his face trimmed up and his nails and he smells he smells delicious and is just ready for our trip. We are actually traveling for Christmas this year. So anyway, for all of our Leo lovers out there, and if you haven't met him yet, this is my baby. <laughs>